This is a video in Clinical Medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the equipment and techniques used to provide intravenous conscious sedation for minor procedures in adults. Practice guidelines may vary in different regions of the world. The American Society of Anesthesiologists has developed practice guidelines for sedation and analgesia by non-anesthesiologists and defines sedation as a continuum but considers three different levels of sedation. Minimal sedation provides a drug-induced state of anxiolysis during which patients respond normally to verbal commands. Moderate sedation, analgesia, or conscious sedation creates a drug-induced depression of consciousness during which patients respond purposefully to verbal commands, either alone or accompanied by light tactile stimulation. No interventions should be required to maintain a patent airway during conscious sedation, and spontaneous ventilation should be adequate. Deep sedation, analgesia, is a drug-induced depression of consciousness during which patients cannot be easily aroused but respond purposefully following repeated or painful stimulation. The ability to maintain ventilatory function may be impaired. Procedures that are particularly invasive or painful may require deep sedation analgesia rather than conscious sedation. Conscious sedation may be considered for any procedure that causes patient discomfort or pain. Contraindications for conscious sedation include a patient with a past history of allergic reaction to analgesic or sedative medications, unstable cardiorespiratory function, and a non-fasting state. Patients undergoing conscious sedation should have had no clear liquids by mouth for two hours before the procedure and no food for six to eight hours before the procedure. As sedation is a continuum, a patient undergoing conscious sedation may become deeply sedated and develop impaired airway reflexes and hypotension. Thus, the clinician providing sedation must be capable of providing cardiorespiratory support to one level beyond the anticipated level of sedation. This means, if you intend to induce conscious sedation in a patient, you must be capable of supporting your patient's ventilation, oxygenation, and hemodynamics in the event that he or she becomes deeply sedated. Ultimately, it is your responsibility to ensure that conscious sedation is performed by qualified personnel. Many hospitals and institutions have developed their own guidelines and credentialing systems for sedation providers. It is your responsibility to know these guidelines and to be appropriately credentialed. A thorough history and physical exam is required immediately before a patient is given conscious sedation. Informed patient consent is required. The physical exam should include vital signs and should focus on evaluation of the patient's airway, neurologic, and cardiorespiratory systems. Physical signs that a patient has a potentially difficult airway include obesity, a limited range of motion in the neck, a small mandible, and a limited ability to open his or her mouth. If there are concerns that the patient may have a difficult airway, such as a history of severe sleep apnea or marked obesity, an anesthesiology consult should be considered. Appropriate laboratory tests should be obtained and reviewed, particularly in patients who have potential risks for altered drug metabolism, such as those with liver or kidney disease. Since sedation is a continuum and a patient's level of sedation can change rapidly, you should have the ability to monitor the patient's level of consciousness hemodynamics, ventilation, and oxygenation. The patient must have a working intravenous line prior to initiating conscious sedation. Emergency equipment for intubation and resuscitation must be immediately available. You must know how to use this equipment and how to administer appropriate medications in case cardiopulmonary resuscitation is required. Monitors include hemodynamic variables of heart rate and blood pressure. N-tidal carbon dioxide monitoring may improve detection of airway obstruction. Oxygenation is monitored with a continuous pulse oximeter. Vital signs should be recorded at least every five minutes while the patient is being sedated. 
In order to provide conscious sedation, you must know the pharmacology and contraindications for every medication that you use or may use. This brief set of descriptions constitutes an overview. You should review each medication in detail before proceeding with conscious sedation. The benzodiazepine, midazolam, is a commonly used sedative. The opioid agonist, fentanyl, is a commonly used analgesic. Both are available in intravenous formulations. These drugs have a rapid onset and offset. They are titratable, and pharmacologic antagonists are available to reverse their effects in the event of an overdose. Midazolam is a potent benzodiazepine that may be administered intravenously. Its action on gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA receptors in the brain, causes anxiolysis and amnesia. Clinically effective doses for sedation vary widely. It is important to titrate the drug to the desired effect. For adults, a dose of 0.5 mg can be administered intravenously and repeated as needed every five minutes. Flumazenil is a benzodiazepine antagonist used to treat benzodiazepine overdose. To reverse the sedative effects of midazolam administered for conscious sedation, an initial dose of 0.2 mg of flumazenil is administered intravenously over 15 seconds. If the desired level of consciousness is not obtained after one minute, a second dose of 0.2 mg can be injected, and that dose repeated at one-minute intervals to a maximum total dose of 1 mg. You should avoid giving flumazenil to patients with severe liver disease or to patients who require long-term benzodiazepine use, since the drug is associated with seizures. Patients given flumazenil need to be monitored closely, because they may become sedated again when the flumazenil effect abates. Fentanyl is a potent opioid that may be delivered by multiple routes. Intravenous fentanyl acts on mu opioid receptors in the brain and causes rapid onset analgesia and sedation. Clinically effective doses for sedation vary widely. It is important to titrate to the desired effect. For adults, an intravenous dose of 25 micrograms can be administered and that dose repeated as needed every five minutes. Naloxone is an opioid antagonist used to reverse the respiratory depression of opioids. The dose of naloxone should be titrated to patient response. To reverse respiratory depression, naloxone may be administered in increments of 0.1 to 0.2 mg intravenously at 2 to 3 minute intervals. Larger than necessary doses of naloxone may cause pain and hypertension. Rapid reversal may cause nausea, vomiting, and diaphoresis. Naloxone administration should be avoided in patients physically dependent on opioids. If you give naloxone to reverse the action of opioids, you must monitor the patient, since the duration of action of some opioids may outlast the duration of action of naloxone. One clinician should be responsible for providing conscious sedation, while another clinician performs the intended procedure. Adequate equipment for monitoring and patient support must be prepared. Before starting conscious sedation, make sure you have the following equipment. An ambu bag and a source of oxygen in the event you need to support your patient's oxygenation and ventilation. Both rigid and flexible suction catheter tips and active suction devices should be at hand. You should continuously monitor your patient's level of consciousness. Other monitors include a blood pressure measurement device, a pulse oximeter, and devices to monitor heart rate and respiratory rate. Although current American Society of Anesthesiologists guidelines do not absolutely require them for conscious sedation, we also recommend an electrocardiogram and an end tidal carbon dioxide detector. Airway equipment, such as a face mask or oral and nasal airways, should be present. You will need equipment for obtaining intravenous access, such as fluids, catheters, needles, and syringes. You should have the drugs that you will or might need to use, including sedatives, analgesics, reversal medications, and emergency medications. Finally, an emergency or crash cart with advanced airway devices and medications must be immediately available. There are many different ways to induce conscious sedation. As a general rule, Start with small, incremental doses and titrate to effect. 
when combining sedatives and analgesics, reduce the dose of each. You may start with midazolam boluses every five minutes with constant re-evaluation of the patient's status. Start with a small intravenous dose, such as 0.5 milligrams, and evaluate the patient's response. At this point, if necessary, you may inject an intravenous bolus of a small amount of fentanyl, initially 25 micrograms, paying particular attention to ensure that the patient's respiratory function is preserved. Depending on the length of the procedure and the patient's response, you may repeat the dose of the medications as required to maintain conscious sedation. Each patient responds differently to sedatives and analgesics, and you must remain vigilant in monitoring your patient's status throughout the procedure. The most serious complications of conscious sedation are when a patient becomes deeply sedated and develops respiratory and cardiovascular depression. Respiratory depression, or apnea, can lead to death, and thus conscious sedation requires appropriate consent, adequate preparation, monitoring, and qualified personnel. Cardiovascular depression, such as hypotension, can be associated with respiratory depression or can occur in isolation. If hypotension develops, sedative medication should be held and intravenous fluids and medications such as phenylephrine or ephedrine should be used to increase the blood pressure to baseline. After conscious sedation is complete, the patient should be monitored until he or she returns to a baseline level of consciousness. Conscious sedation can provide benefits to both the patient who is undergoing and the clinician who is performing an invasive procedure. Sedation is a continuum, and clinicians performing conscious sedation must be able to provide cardiorespiratory support to one level beyond the intended level of sedation. A thorough patient evaluation is required to identify any contraindications. When performing conscious sedation, appropriate monitoring and equipment for resuscitation must be available. The clinician must be knowledgeable in the pharmacology of the chosen sedatives and analgesics. The most serious complication of conscious sedation in a patient is respiratory and cardiovascular depression. At the completion of the procedure, the patient should be monitored until he or she returns to a baseline level of consciousness.